10, 11, you're one all with two to play. We're one all with two to play. Excellent. I was out there 10, 11, I was hosting a tour group. Yeah. And so I was there for the, for the Melbourne test match. And I reckon I played what, 20, 20 Ashes test matches. Yeah. And I reckon day one, at Melbourne 10 11 a game I wasn't even playing in might have been my best day at the, in the ashes it was utterly phenomenal would you bowl them out for 100 and then 130 for one at the end of the day you know to go there and you see that 90 odd thousand in there and by the end of it like all just English in there it was just the most amazing feeling in the world that they've come on their, their day boxing day Australian cricket day and all of a sudden it's all English in there having a great time time of their life wasn't it for all of us and just the most amazing uh, most amazing feeling. It sure was. Well, I, you can get into that in a minute, but I've got to concentrate on this for now. <laughs> oh, Butchy. Shot. That's put a bit on. There you go. There you go, Duke of Bellington. Yeah. Over to you. I've just changed my techers here. I've gone for my three wood here. <laughs> oh, stay there. It's gone. That stayed there. It's in the trees. Yeah. Oh, it came out. Yeah, it's out. Probably no shot. But no shot. That's a shame. One nil, Butcher. No, I mean, it really is a shame. <laughs> So pick it up then, you've had a brilliant coach journey back to the hotel and then came back for, uh, you know, for the day after Boxing Day in England, are, are well on top. But I suppose the job's still not done yet. I mean, it's the best day, best day ever, but it's not over. Absolutely not. And you know Australia always going to try and come back, but it's actually quite amazing to look back. I and mean, obviously you have your, as you'd know, but you have your, like, your Christmas lunch, don't you? And you've just had training and the front page is Ricky Ponting and his family and it's Christmas and it's Australia and, <laughs> and then the next day he's in the front page again when get him out, get him sacked or whatever it was. So it's the most amazing, so it's 48 hours. And I actually remember David Saker as well, I mentioned him a bit, but he uh, it was actually one of the days that week where he was adamant and he knew everyone there, I'm from Victoria, like telling <laughs> over the, my ground. And he's like, he's obviously driven in there, played there for 10, 15 years and he's like, we're all getting into his bus and he's gone, right, we're off. And he's gone out the exit that he thinks he's him, but obviously through his whole career he's driven a car, he's got wedged in. So on one of the days, we're literally now in the underground at the MCG with our, with our combi stuck. that's got a roof. And we're stuck, we're letting down tyres to get it down, get it back out. England were winning, he's bowling coach and he's in his home ground. And then he's got a vehicle stuck underground at the MCG. Um, and then of course there were the, there was the sort of what then became traditional celebrations in front of the Great Southern Stand. Yep. Of course, all of the yep. all of the, the English fans, including myself and my tour group, were all up there in the Great Southern Stand. Yeah, you polish off the Australians. It was, a, it was an absolute thumping you gave them. Um, and then you all came out and you know, Swanee got the, 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 the what sprinkler, was it? The sprinkler yeah. dance started. That that became sort of like the signature of the rest yeah. of the trip. You look back on some of the ashes and we are so lucky that the support we get home and away, wherever we go. And even still speaking to people now who, like you said, have gone on that tour and paid money. They, that's still, they remember that as one of their best ever times in their lives. So I think it was just an opportunity to, to get out there and enjoy the moment with the, the supporters who had, you know, spent good money to get out there and, and, and witness it. Not. Uh, focused on you very much for the trip you've, you've played your part up until yeah. this point obviously but there was something something missing from your cv wasn't there it was, yeah, it was. to get an ashes 100 was what i was desperate for and just to do it at the scg on the edge of us winning the ashes in australia was amazing the following home series um it was bell's ashes wasn't it i mean you, you scored yeah. what 300s in the series 300s and, dom and absolutely dominated um at a home ashes victory yeah it was it's certainly the moment in that 2000 and I suppose 13, you know, and, and I suppose that's the thing with Ashes cricket is you get the opportunity all the time. It doesn't always pan out, but to say that I actually, you know, went into a series and was man of the series, yeah, for me, looking back was, was um, personally, was probably the best I ever played for England. Young fella, Ollie Pope, yeah. who looks to have the game, yeah. absolutely, but, it, but it, up here, he kind of needs to be able to, to laser in a little bit more. When I watch, um, you know, Ollie play, I always believe that like you said, he has all the options, but it seems to be at one tempo. It seems to be he's out there, he's busy. For me, I had to really work on being busy. I and mean, that's one thing with Graham Gooch and Andy Flower talked about, like always the intent between the wickets. He has that all the time. It nearly feel like he just sometimes needs to drop it down one <laughs> right. and actually have the ability uh, to be comfortable. Even if you're on naught for 30 balls, that's okay. I'll leave the ball because that's test cricket. You, you go through periods where you might be soaking up pressure and then you're putting pressure back on. And I feel that when I watch him play at the moment, like you said, he's got all the ability and the tools, I think, to be a really high class test match player, but can have the ability to sometimes just soak up pressure for an hour where you're not scoring and then go back to your natural game if it's a half volley or a bad ball. Um, so I think that's where I see him at the moment. Um, but again, he's so young and you can, if you can start putting the rest of it, that mental side, but also the defensive side together, I think then we've got a really good player. Okay. Go and find your ball then. Yeah, from cool. fairway again. Uh, trees, over there. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, too much ground. Stay short. It's all right, you're out. Yeah, advantage butcher here. Can't let him win this. What's he hit there? You are kidding me. <laughs> Don't know what that was from Butch. Oh, that's pretty good. Choo choo. Oh, yeah. Is it bowl to the left, bowl to the right? Something like that. This is in, though. Bell, what am I doing? All right, take it away. Put yourself out of your misery. I'm trying to give you this one. Oi, 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 one up, Ski, one up. with one, one to play. play. If you were on the, the coaching staff of this Ashes squad heading out there at the moment, what would your main messages be? I think what everyone's thinking at the moment, you think Australia are going to be too strong for England, but this is an opportunity to, to put a marker down. There's some young players in here, again, with their career. It's probably a little bit like when I went on my first tour. It's an opportunity, isn't it, to show the world that you can play at that level. So I see there's a... That always brings, Ashes cricket always brings individual opportunity for something special and to, and to be remembered for. So I think England, if they stay tight as a unit and but do the basics right, but they're, they're always going to stem from first innings runs. What do you make of England's sort of new look top three? They're, they're still searching really for a, a settled opening pair. It looks like it's going to be Hamid and Burns with Milan at three. Does that look, does that look like a, a top three that's, that's likely to keep the middle order in the dressing room for, for long periods well, of time? That's certainly going to be the, the, the key, isn't it? I, I like the thought of Milan. I think you know, we, it's proven at international level, certainly in other formats that he can play. And we've seen that in T20. Um, and, and he has an Ashes 100 out there. So that's, that'll give him some confidence. But Burns has proven again, he's got Ashes 100s. We need him to have a, a, a solid series, if not a, his best series in an England shirt. Yep. And then obviously Hamid again as a younger player. We've seen him play well in India yeah. on different surfaces, but going to Australia is very different. Having Stokes back is absolutely a massive lift. I think even for Joe Root as captain, not just as a batsman bowler, but in the dressing room. Him being in there kind of gives the Aussies someone to think about. 100%. And like you said, he, you have those players, don't you? Obviously Flintoff in the past and, and then those players that love that kind of and the team will galvanise around and, and behind. And I think he is that, plays a leader in that group. Um, and it'll be interesting, he's fresh. Hopefully he's excited. I mean, again, it's just great one to see him back playing cricket, actually. Chris Wokes, another man you know yep. well from the Bears. His numbers away from home, everyone yep. will say, oh yeah, but away from home, he's, you know, he's, he's this, he's that, he can't do this. I think he's twice the bowler he was the last time he was down there. And actually, the focus will be very much on Jimmy and, yep. and on, on Stuart. But Wokes might actually be the key guy if he can get through enough. Yeah, test I, overs I, and I, test I, matches. 100%. I think um, the last time he played a full season or full year with England, I think it was England's player of the year. And then it, yeah. from COVID and I think he, he had to obviously do some quarantine. And then I think Mo and Ali went down and he went down because he was on the same flight. So he hasn't yeah. played a lot of cricket since he was England's player of the year. When Wokesy is in that England team, it feels a better side. Good stuff. Yeah. Go and find your ball again. Yeah, in the rough again. Are you on the fairway again? No, are you? no I'm on okay. the fairway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the bunker. Found a fair way. Strike. <laughs> oh no, not over there. Is that alright? Yeah, it's on the dance floor. Oh, it's big. Felt good though. It's that legendary bell timing again. Uh, don't get it very often now. <laughs> Two putts to win it. Shouldn't be a problem. Down there. Oh. Oh, that's red terribly. <laughs> that's not why I wanted that, Butch. Oh, it's a good part, Ian Bell. I needed that. For the half. For the half and for the win. Oh, it's right in the middle, isn't it? Thank you, sir. If it does go down to, to the final test match with Sydney. And England have kind of England would have have to scrap like mad to sort of take it down to that far. Our way to win the Ashes is still to be in there for that fifth Test match. You know, Australia if they get on a roll, I can't see us getting back into it. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be important. Hopefully by the new year there will be that amazing British uh, support in there. But uh, yeah, it's going to, they're going to have to play that really well. It's uh, very very unfortunate that you've ended up on the losing side there. I mean, I, I did my best uh, for you. Stuck it in the bunker down there. I just couldn't hit a fairway. <laughs> Shocking. We'll play it again. Great to see you. Thanks again, Butch. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate.